How much longer are you going to live? I couldn't believe it. How can someone say such cruel words? I sighed and told my husband the chilling truth. My name is Anna, a 57-year-old interior designer. I love my job and have been working at the same company for a long time. And I want to work hard every day until retirement. But there's always someone who undermines my motivation. That person is my husband, Fred. I met him when I joined this company. It was about 30 years ago, through an introduction from my then boss. He wanted to introduce his son and me to each other. In the past, refusing such invitations from superiors meant career difficulties. So reluctantly, I decided to meet him. At the time, I didn't have a boyfriend, and I was in my late 20s. My parents were worried about me, and even if I didn't plan to get married, I thought it would be fine to meet him. Fred was younger than me, and still had a charming atmosphere back then. Mostly, he seemed like a college student. But occasionally, he showed a mature side. And above all, he was handsome. We talked, and surprisingly, we got along well. We exchanged contact information and started meeting each other. Well, naturally, our relationship developed, and he earnestly escorted me. I was captivated by his sincere demeanor and a contrast with his mature aura. After about two years of dating, we decided to get married. When I reported to my then boss, my father-in-law, he was very happy for us. And it wasn't like I played favorite for the sake of my job, but we were naturally drawn to each other and ended up getting married. I was surprised myself. I think it was great to be able to get married in a happy state. Moreover, thanks to this marriage, I was able to be promoted to department manager. Considering the circumstances at that time, it was difficult for a woman in her 30s to be chosen as a department manager. So, of course, there was resistance from those around me. But I worked harder relentlessly because I couldn't betray their expectations. Thanks to that, little by little, the people around me started to recognize me. But there was one person who didn't like it the most, and that was my husband. Huh, you got promoted to department manager. Isn't there some mistake? That was my husband's initial reaction when I reported my promotion. No, there's no way it's a mistake. Your father recommended me, you know. Ah, so it's all thanks to my old man. Huh? Well, I mean, a woman can't become a department manager based on her abilities. Wait, isn't that really harsh? Nah. There is not a single female boss in the company I know. Because my father is in that kind of position, you were able to get promoted too, I guess. Yes? I was shocked when my husband suddenly said that. He was like an embodiment of male chauvinism. I wanted my husband to be on my side, no matter what happened. This was the first time I felt distrust towards my husband. But at that time, I still loved my husband. And he was still young, so I thought our values would change over time. However, my husband didn't change. He always pushes all the household chores onto me. I'm working too, and I have a higher position and salary. I didn't say anything like that to him. I knew that if I mentioned it, it would escalate into a terrible fight. Just after my promotion, my husband said to me, Well, then you should just quit your job. He said it in an excessive manner. At the time, I couldn't help but get emotional at his words. Why would you say something like that? Can I work hard in a job I love? When I tried to rebel against him like that, my husband's face turned red 
and he retorted, "Shut up! You're the wife, and I'm the husband. In this house, you listen to what I say. I thought you were a more open-minded person. What? If I weren't one, you'd be full-time housewife. The moment we got married, you know, we would often have such loud fights." The reason we didn't divorce even after such fights was that the both of us still held on to some old-fashioned belief at the time: divorce shouldn't be taken lightly. If you decide to get married, you should be committed to each other for life. That kind of thinking was ingrained in me, and I also felt sorry for my father-in-law. So, no matter how unfair it was. I never mentioned the word divorce. My husband was the same. Even though we fought, he never brought up the idea of divorce. Time flew by, and we had been married for over thirty years. Unfortunately, we were not blessed with children. No matter how hard we tried, we couldn't conceive, and in the end, we gave up on having children. Our parents looked disappointed, but they comforted us, saying that we had tried our best. I truly think we were fortunate to have such wonderful parents. Both my mother-in-law and father-in-law were kind people, and I was always grateful for their presence. Around ten years after we got married, my father-in-law started his own company and paved his own way. I was amazed when I saw him like that. Now it has become quite a large company with a significant number of employees. It's truly impressive to have built such a big company in a single generation. And considering the age at which he started his business, I have nothing but respect for him. In my work, I aim to be like my father-in-law. By the way. When my husband heard that his own father was starting his own business, he said, "Looks like my old man has lost his mind. There's no way he could succeed." He said it, making fun of him. When he succeeds, then he said, "He just happened to get lucky, right? When his luck runs out, he'll go bankrupt." He said things like that. Every time he said those things, I felt really terrible. Why couldn't he just wholeheartedly support his father's efforts? I'm not sure if it was jealousy or something, but I really wanted him to stop making those remarks. While I let my husband's words slide off, I made up my mind to continue striving for my own ideals. That determination from back then still lives on within me. I managed to climb the corporate ladder, and became a department head by the time I turned forty. On the other hand, my husband, despite getting older, couldn't seem to advance in his career. Well, it doesn't really matter to me, but he always tried to involve me in such manner. Whenever we had an argument, my husband would say. Just because you're successful at work doesn't mean you can act all high and mighty at home, you know. But I wasn't acting high and mighty at all. If anything, I thought my husband was the one acting that way. I had become completely disillusioned with my husband, so his remarks no longer shocked me. But recently, there was something that bothered me a little. My husband's behavior seemed strange. He has been buying clothes excessively lately. He started paying attention to his hairstyle, using hair wax and hairspray. He also keeps his smartphone on him at all times. Could it be an affair? I thought about such things, but quickly dismissed the idea. Maybe he was being criticized by female colleagues at work for being unfashionable or something. I calmly thought it through and decided not to worry about it. Amidst all of this, one day I received a call from the hospital. It was the hospital where my husband has his health checkup. Since my husband drank alcohol almost every day 
and often attended drinking parties. He would always fail his annual health checkup. But it was the first time I received a direct call from a doctor. Six months to live? Yes. I believe it will be better to explain it to the family before informing the patient directly. My husband had a serious illness, and the doctor diagnosed him with six months to live. Please inform your husband at a suitable time. It's better for the partner who has been together for many years to convey the news, since some people might panic. The doctor's words hardly registered in my ears. Only the fact that my husband had six months to live kept swirling in my head. Rather than feeling sad, I was just astonished. But this was an important matter, so I had to tell my husband. As soon as I returned from work, I immediately had the conversation with him. I went to the hospital today. What? You look serious. Are you dying or something? The doctor said it's six months. Huh? Six months? I nodded, and my husband seemed lost in thoughts for a moment. I see, six months. Hey, what are you thinking? I asked, annoyed and unable to understand my husband's words and actions. Nah. Well, I mean, we're getting old, and it's inevitable, right? I thought he was remarkably calm. Aren't you shaken? Only six months left to live. Well, there is nothing we can do about it, right? Maybe we should just enjoy the remaining life, you know. My husband's detached attitude made me sigh. After that. My husband started coming home later than usual. He suddenly had more business trips, and was frequently absent from home. I thought my husband was suspicious once again. Then one day, I found a card from a strip club in my husband's suit pocket. Ah, I see. He's getting involved with those girls. I was exasperated. But I thought that since he only had a short time left to live, he could do as he pleased. Amidst all this, as I was getting out of the bath, I heard my husband talking on the phone. It seemed that he hadn't noticed the door to his room was slightly open. I could hear the conversation my husband was having. Since my wife only has a little time left, once she's gone. You can come live here with me. This was undoubtedly an affair, and there, for the first time, I realized the true nature behind my husband's strange behavior. He believed it was me who was dying. After thinking for a while, I made a decision. I would let him continue thinking that I was reaching the end of my life. After that, my husband continued with the same lifestyle. But at some point, he started splurging extravagantly. He bought designer clothes, and under the guise of business trip, he would go on trips with his mistress. I was appalled and quickly prepared to separate from my husband. I hired a PI to obtain evidence of his affair. The photos showed my husband entering the hotel with a young woman. I wondered what was so appealing about a man like him, but perhaps he was spending lavishly on her. Maybe she believed that my husband was wealthy enough to afford such extravagance. Well, the reasons really didn't matter. I rented a new place and hired a lawyer for the divorce proceedings. Amidst all this, one day, my husband said something outrageous to me. Huh? How long are you going to live? Unbelievable! How can he say such terrible words? It had been almost six months since I delivered the news. Yet, my husband, seeing me still lively and working, 
said such things. I thought it was about time, so I finally revealed the truth to him. The one with the limited time is you, Fred. What? Stop with the joke. It seemed that my husband believed I was joking. Well, never mind that. What's more important is that I know you're having an affair. Please, just let me go. When I said that, my husband was slightly surprised, but soon wore a triumphant expression. Oh, fine. He was delighted, thinking he would receive a substantial amount of money through asset division. We immediately began the divorce proceedings. I claimed compensation through my lawyer. Apparently, my husband had to pay the compensation for his affair partner as well, since she refused to contribute. Thus, the long years of marriage with my husband came to an end. Sometime later, he suddenly called me. Hey, what the hell is going on? Aren't you the one sick? Even though I didn't put him on speaker, I could hear his voice through the phone. I told you when we separated, didn't I? The one with the limited time left is you. No way. Then the recent shortness of breath and palpitations were... Well, yeah, something like that. Wasn't it because my age? Jesus. Why didn't you tell me? I did, but you never listened to me. But it doesn't matter anymore. You and I are complete strangers now. Do your best with your treatment or whatever. Th that's... Of course, I'll you'll have to pay me compensation. It will be deducted from the asset division. Are you abandoning me? Your spouse for many years? What are you saying now? It makes me sick. You betrayed me. I have no obligation to be kind to you. Goodbye. We'll never see each other or talk again. Anna, wait. My ex-husband called out to me, but I hung up without a word. And I blocked his phone number. My ex-in-laws had already passed away. Based on my ex-husband's condition, he had properly squandered all his inheritance. Since then, I made sure not to hear anything about what happened to him. I'm already living a life without him. Even if he were still alive, he would likely be living considerably difficult life. Meanwhile, I'm working hard as I always have. Even on my own, I can lead a fulfilling life. I plan to continue working diligently until retirement and gradually think about a graceful old age.